Now let's broaden this out by speaking with the man that saw it all 20 years ago. He was a former George W. Bush administration appointed official that served as a media and public affairs advisor to the Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld. He also served as media advisor in Iraq and a co-founder of Vanguard Africa. He was at the Pentagon 20 years ago when the attack happened. So former advisor, Secretary of Defense and co-founder of Vanguard Africa, Christopher Harvin, thank you so much for joining us on TVC News at 1. First, I want us to start with the reaction of the U.S. and the world. What did 9-11 do to the U.S., especially the fight against terror 20 years now? Sir, thank you very much for the opportunity to join you today. Um, I appreciate the tribute that you, that you just had on your show. Um, we all have vivid memories of where we were at the time, and those events have changed our lives. It's very important to remember 9-11 and those who perished in the attacks. And now is not the time to be complacent with terrorism, and we need to be vigilant in this fight for generations to come. And I, you know, from 20 years' perspective, looking back, um, the architects of the of the war on terror, both at home abroad, I believe, can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief because there hasn't been a large another large scale attack of this magnitude um, in the United States. Well, since 9/11, America realized how unsafe she was, and had since brought up a, a lot of innovations to its security uh, architecture. But then, should we still see 9-11 as a war or simply look at a legacy, the gains afterwards? It's a very good question. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a generational fight against terrorism. I think today with Afghanistan, the terrorists around the world are even more emboldened. Um, and we have to be vigilant. Uh, we have to continue this fight and realize that, that 20 years ago today, the Taliban harbored terrorism. Uh, they harbored Osama bin Laden. They harbored um, al-Qaeda. And, and today they're back in power. Um, you see across the world, whether it's um, militants in Nigeria and Chad, militants in Mozambique, um, Syria, um, there's a jihadist highway across Africa and the Middle East and Southeast Asia. And, and they're emboldened. And I think we have to be aware that this is not the end. Um, very well, we could be in the middle of this. But then uh, reports about the vilification of Muslims, racial profiling of um, immigrants abound in the, in the media. Would these experience of the 9-11 ever allow for mutual respect among the Americans, the Muslims, and the rest of the people around the world? That's, that's a good question, uh, and one that you could argue either way. Um, you know, you have to look at, at what has brought us together, uh, the United States and the Middle East, and, and partners. America is a, a very divided country. It was at the time of 9-11, and I think it is more so today. There's a lot of partisan infighting in Congress. There's a lot of partisan infighting um, um, amongst the Biden administration and the former Trump appointees. Um, but it's strengthened, you know, America has strengthened its relationship with its allies, whether in Europe or Africa or the Middle East. And I think we have to continue strengthening that. There are strained relationships now. Um, and we have to be very vigilant um, in, in building some of those back uh, and continuing to build upon it. Yeah, because you saw this war 20 years you know, ago and then the, the, the horrific nature of what Americans experience and people are from around the world, would you say America is safer now than 20 years ago? I think that our awareness of the, of the challenges, of the threat, um, puts us in a better place. Our intel capabilities, as well as our uh, responders on the front line, our military, um, our first responders, um, the police, the fire departments, we had never seen an attack of this magnitude. We weren't prepared for it. Um, as much as you want to think we were prepared or someone can prepare, you're never prepared for that moment. Um, and so I think we're better prepared. Uh, we're better prepared on the intel side. However, I do think the challenges that America has seen in Afghanistan and that particularly the French pulling out of the Sahel in, West, in the Western Sahel, those create problems and it emboldens terrorism. So it's a double-edged sword. Well, we, well in, in your analysis, you, you, you kept mentioning Afghanistan and we saw what happened you know, in the very la the last end of the month and what is going on in Afghanistan. Is it that America uh, is now abandoning Afghanistan to themselves to you know, cater to their own needs? Or would America still be interested in the affairs of Afghanistan? I think America has to be interested in Afghanistan um, because of the threat of al-Qaeda. The Haqqani network is clearly in power. 
um, in parts of Afghanistan. There, you know, the Interior Minister is is um, Secretary Haqqani. Um, so I think the Americas have to be interested. Unfortunately, the partisan infighting and in politics. This administration cares more about saying we shut down the war and we pulled out of Afghanistan than it is about fighting terrorism. And I think this puts our allies, particularly in Africa, um, at, at very confused that that they need our help. A lot of these countries don't have the capabilities of fighting terrorism we do. They don't have the economies. There's corruption and destabilization in these countries. And they need America, the Europeans, to help train, build that capacity on the intel level, and stabilize countries. Well, the, the Taliban themselves, they say that, you know, in Afghanistan justify their takeover of the country because of what they perceived as, you know, the atrocities committed by the U.S., you know, so-called atrocities by the U.S., which happened within the two decades, you know, of the op occupation by the U.S. military. Uh, do you also subscribe to their argument for taking over the country? I, I see the challenges um, of why they've taken over the country. Um, it's been a 20-year long, hot, hard-fought war. Uh, there's been civilian casualties. Um, there's been corruption within the government. Uh, the technocrats did not run the country well. Um, and the Taliban have been, been planning for this for a while. They saw an opportunity, um, and they seized it. Uh, and it's very troubling to, to those of us who have, were in the Pentagon that day or in the World Trade Centers or who have lost people or have been deployed and, and, and spent their entire lives, you know, there's an entire generation um, of, of men and women in our military forces that don't remember 9-11. So I think we have to re-educate our society um, and why it's important and why Afghan was important the last 20 years to stabilize. Uh, most definitely. Uh, does that say, is that to say that um, there is a justification for global war, what we see around? Because some people are saying this is the reason why the United States will designate some you know, group of people, a terrorist nation or terrorist uh, organization, and then the treatments, the torture they give to people, all in the name of fighting terrorism. Would that say that that is you know, clearly justified by the United States? You know, I don't, I don't subscribe to that argument because if you look at the brutality of the Taliban, um, it's a backsliding in democracy. It's a backsliding in women's rights, human rights, religious freedoms. Um, so I, I don't think that this should be about tactics that were used early on or that have been outlawed now. I, I think that this is more about um, the, the vigilance of fighting terrorism. I, I agree that um, there are individuals um, who were um, in Guantanamo and other places um, then there are reports of, of brutalities and things. But at the end of the day, um, America was attacked, and America um, fought back. We, we stabilized the country, right. and unfortunately our political process here um, was a hasty withdrawal of troops that left Americans in harm's way. Most definitely, uh, in very few minutes' time, the pre United States President and, and First Lady of the United States, Joe Biden, will be visiting the uh, foundation where the, the victims of 9-11, uh, where the incident happened then. What, do, what would you say about the reminiscence of this day and how we should keep remembering those who fell victim to this incident? So I think it's important um, that the current president goes and, and pays his respects, just as the former president George Bush is doing today in Pennsylvania. Um, and I think that he needs to have a strong reminder of why this war has been important and, and take account and, and educate the American people. And the American people want to hear from him. How are we going to continue to protect the homeland? Particularly as we know that Al Qaeda was harbored in Afghanistan before under Taliban control. How can his diplomacy and his military might defend our homeland and deter that from happening again. Well, m most definitely. L what, what are your prognostification, or prognostication rather, of um, what is to come or things that we should be expecting vis-a-vis uh, -vis the United States in you know, its big brother role, ensuring that the world is safe? W what are the things you're looking forward to seeing in, in the coming future? You know, I would like to see more um, camaraderie amongst our political, both the Republicans and the Democrats, 
Um, this leadership should come from the White House. It should come from the leadership in Congress, the State Department. But we need to, to join together to fight this war, and we need to, to back our allies. Our allies need to know that we're going to be there where the Afghan government, we were not there for them in the last few weeks uh, when they fell to the Taliban. So our allies, particularly in Nigeria, uh, Chad, Maui, uh, they need to know that we're there for them both um, financially and capacity building for their military and intelligence services. Well, the man who was in Pentagon 20 years ago when the attack happened, former advisor, Secretary of Defense, co-founder of Vanguard Africa, Christopher Harvin. Thank you so much for speaking with TBC News. Thank you very much, sir. It's a pleasure.